All set. Okay. You know, right now, Cape May County suffers from what I would deem seasonal employment. They have really a four-month economy in Cape May County. Had Route 55 been completed as it was intended many moons ago, they would have a much more year-round economy in Cape May County. Also, I learned from Freeholder Director Jerry Thornton that Cape May County is number six in the United States of America, the sixth county of the hardest to evacuate in the United States of America. Should there be a catastrophic storm in Cape May County, they do not have a proper evacuation route. They simply do not. It is unsafe. Where 55 ends in Cumberland County, there are numerous accidents, numerous fatalities. It's a very dangerous road. Further, for our legislative district, had Route 55 been completed, Max, you would see an economic corridor. Um, the industrial parks that exist in Vineland and in Millville would be linked with the industrial parks that are in Cape May County. Also, Millville has a great small airport. Cape May County has one in Woodbine and one in Rio Grande. At least South Jersey, the real South Jersey, Legislative District 1, would have been on the map to attract a company like Amazon to be in our district for hundreds of jobs, well-paying jobs as well. And if we, if we were unable to attract Amazon, we would have at least been in the game to attract other companies. We simply lack the infrastructure here. And that's a direct result of the Van Drew team's lack of leadership in Trenton for all these years. And Bob Andrzak is not going to buck that trend. You took me on a tour. You graciously took me on a tour of the, the, the law office. And in that tour, you showed me a photo of your father with former Governor Tom Kane. And the Republican Party of Kane in New Jersey seems very far removed from the party of President Trump. And the styles are very different. One is very respectful, uh, very genteel almost. The other is, is brash and uh, nativist, I would say. Okay. And, and what do you say to that divide, Mike? In other words, for those people who are looking for that kind of judicious, uh, intellectually informed, um, working across the aisle leadership, are you saying that that's not the time right now for that? Or, or how do you reconcile those two strains of the party, your party? It, it, it's, you know, look, I, I happen to love Governor Kane and uh, Tom Kane Jr. as well. We need to make our tent bigger in the Republican Party. I would like to see a return, um, at least in the state of New Jersey, to someone like a Governor Tom Kane. I think those were very happy times, you know, New Jersey and you perfect together. Was there ever a better slogan for our state? I, I, I would question that, at least in my lifetime, there probably was not. Um, I certainly want to emulate someone like a Tom Kane, but when the gauntlet is laid down by the general majority pack with a racist mailer, and, I'm, and I'll be glad to call that racist because it is, and it's been deemed so by their own party, it's very difficult to be genteel and gentlemanly especially when your opponent refuses to disavow it. I mean, that's what's so mind-boggling to me. You know, when the leader of his party, the lieutenant governor of his party, the chairman of his party are calling for him to disavow that mailer, how can we not go on the attack? You know, it's very difficult to reach across the aisle to someone like that that is really just so controlled by the party his party and you know the powers that be coming out of the Camden political machine. Look, this is 2019. Next year we can deal with President Trump. I'm a supporter of President Trump. I was a, an elected delegate for President Trump. I don't always agree with his style. You know, I'm a trial attorney at the end of the day. My, me and my opponent oftentimes go to lunch, grab a beer together. You know, that's, I think those times are necessary. Um, for us to be able to come together as a state, as a nation. Um, you know I'm very active in the NAACP and locally. I was graciously awarded uh, an award last week, just you know, a week ago today, in fact, um, by my local chapter, the NAACP. They don't always agree with me, me being a Republican, me being a Trump supporter, but our organization, at the end of the day, is one of love. And, and that's something that our, my local president Angie Edwards always reminds us of, you know, and, um, and what our mission statement is in the NAACP. 
I have to tell you, I think we all need to get back to that and understand that this isn't always about personal things. But ideologically, I don't think that the Democrat Party of today is on the right side of history. They don't believe in the Constitution. They don't believe in the rule of law. They see them as roadblocks. I truly believe that. We're about 38 days out. You say your opponent's already up on television? Yes. D do you have any plans to go up on TV? How are you going to get the message out? And, and what's the general framework of you taking your case and your team's case to the voters at this time? Okay. I think our digital campaign has been so much better than what I've seen from my opponents. Our digital campaign, I think, has become the model. I was talking to Jack Cittarelli uh, two days ago, and he said, Michael, your digital campaign is going to become the model for Republicans in the state of New Jersey. So I really think we're winning the digital war. Um, we do have a commercial that is going to go up. Uh, we have a direct-to-text program that we've been using very, very effectively with over a 90% open rate. Again, I think that there really exists a silent majority that has had enough. Um, you know, I, I quote the 1970, I think it's 1976 movie Network all the time, that it's time for New Jerseyans to get off their couch, go over to their window, lift it up, stick their head out, and say, I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. And uh, I, I truly believe it is that time. And, and I think that message is resonating. Um, you know, Antoine can attest to this. I happen to love pizza and I love ice cream. So I've been holding rallies at custard stands and at pizzerias. And, you know, we had over 80 people show up for ice cream one day who were interested in the campaign and getting involved in the campaign, putting out signs for the campaign, sending text messages for the campaign. It's just been really overwhelming, and I feel very a, a warm feeling that so many people have embraced our campaign. And let me ask you this, this last question for now. Um, what's, what's the most inspirational book that you've ever read, or, or that that book that you read from time to time that, that gives you a certain perspective on things? Certainly Governor Kane's book was a very influential book, but I have to tell you, probably my favorite book of all time is Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, An Inquiry into Values by... Robert Piersig. It's correct, yeah. by Piersig. And I happen to love that book, and I've read that book probably a dozen times since college, and I always return to that book. I just happen to really, really love that book. You find something uh, valuable in the balancing of the romantic and classical points of view on life. Of you've read the book, yeah, obviously. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, so in other words, taking the motorcycle ride and getting the wind in your hair, but also knowing how to repair the motorcycle. Very Absolutely. critical. One of my favorite quotes from Piersig is, you know, it's the sides of the mountain that sustain the top. So, you know, all of these people that Antoine, Eric, and I are running into, they're the size of the mountain, right? I mean, they're the ones that are going to support us when we're in Trenton. And, you know, Senator Bucco, may he rest in peace. I remember one of his famous quotes. I got to hear him speak one time. Uh, he told the people that were listening, he said, when I'm in Trenton, you're in Trenton. And I want that accountability. I want that same level of accountability uh, given to me, but, you know, um, obviously, The Politics of Inclusion was a phenomenal, phenomenal book as well by Governor Kane. I read that book. Um, you know, Republicans need to make their tent bigger. We do. Um, but that's, that's pretty much all I have to answer that question.